Welcome everyone to the 2020 APEC Groundbreakers Virtual Tour by APACO UC. This year our event will be the biggest one ever done with 174 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops and hands-on labs from 123 different speakers over 11 days. Also, it will cover session on four different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions you can and all sessions will be available to replay as many times as you want for two weeks after the initial session date and time. You can also interact with the speaker at any time during that two weeks by posting questions or comments directly in the playback session page. I would like to say thanks to our Oracle user groups and Java user groups that made this event possible and also to our sponsors Oracle Groundbreakers and CloudDB. Now for today's session, SQL Gone Wild, tam uh, Taming and Tuning the Oracle Optimizer by Gav Gavin Zorma. Zorma. Uh, please feel free to write questions at any time during our section by using the Q&A tab of the Zoom webinar and Gavin will be answering them at the end of the session. If any technical issues or any problems during the presentation, please feel free to contact me as the moderator directly by using the chat option of the Zoom webinar. Basically, just to make more clear, any questions regarding the presentation to Gavin, please use the Q&A option. If you want to uh, contact the moderator directly, then use the chat option. Now, without any more delays, I would like to leave you with this amazing session by Gavin Sorma. Gavin, I stop sharing my screen and you will be able now to uh, uh, share your own screen. I will put myself in mute. Hello, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the APEC OEC, OEC team, a very warm welcome to the session. I'm Gavin, and in this session, we will examine the various issues that can cause the optimizer to select a suboptimal plan, that's SQL gone wild, and what new features have been introduced in Oracle's LC versions maybe 12.2, uh, all the way up to Oracle 19C that can help us to actually go and think the Oracle optimizer. So why do we face SQL gone wild scenarios? I think all of us as DBAs must have heard this in the past. My query runs every day for the past year for 10 seconds and only for the past week now it's taken over 10 minutes. And I would say in one simple line, most probably the query is performing badly now. Let's say again, most probably emphasizing that is because the execution plan has changed. You ask the DBA, he would normally say nothing has changed in the database you ask the developer, he said, I have not changed the code, but end of the day, my user really doesn't care. He wants his report to still run in 10 seconds. So I'm sure all of us in our careers as DBS have faced a situation where a well running, optimally uh, tuned statement suddenly goes wild and the performance gets at very badly reduced. So, why do we actually face this SQL go wild? And here are some answers of it. So, this is not comprehensive. So. Statistics end of the day is good for the optimizer. So if our statistics are missing or they are stale, then it can affect the way the optimizer will select an execution plan. By default, statistics are gathered automatically in what is called the maintenance window. And in many cases that maintenance window may not be adequate for a very large database with huge tables. So what happens when the maintenance window closes? Maybe out of 1,000 tables, only 500 have been analyzed. So possibly 500 tables have missing or stale statistics. Uh, there could be also a case where some indexes are missing or the converse of that is where we have too many indexes on the table because people keep adding indexes in an ad hoc manner to tune up a particular query and then forget about such indexes, these indexes remain. And the presence of so many indexes not only slows down your DML, but when you have multiple indexes that the optimizer needs to choose from, it can sometimes make the wrong choice. Having skewed data, when my data is not properly distributed, it is more skewed towards certain values, can also cause us to have issues in, uh, in our integration plans. That at least we have a tool called histograms. Uh, 
By default, out of the box, the database is geared for optimization with the parameter code or underscore rows. That means by default, the Oracle database is optimized for best throughput as opposed to best response time. And this setting may not be, uh, may not be good for other applications like OLTP applications. So we need to also know what is our optimization goal. Are we tuning our database for best response time or are we tuning it for maximum throughput? Sometimes as developers, we put in hints and we want to know why are these hints being ignored? Because I put in a hint to force a particular index, but I don't know why the index is not being used and my query is still performing badly. So we'll see there's a very good feature now in Oracle 19C that can help us to overcome this particular problem. In most cases, we find that once we do upgrades, which also means we are changing the optimizer version, certain queries will get regressed. So maybe after I upgrade from Oracle 12C to 19C, uh, maybe 99% of the queries are running much faster, but it's the 1% of queries that are key to my application that are running very slow now. So we have to see how do we actually ensure plan stability through um, you know, database upgrades. End of the day, I have to load my SQL statements into what is called the library cache, the area and memory. So ideally, I want to pass once and execute many times. So that should be a very key performance tuning goal. Pass once and execute many times. Because the passing phase is the most uh, resource intensive phase of the execution of a SQL statement. So here it's where the, the execution plan is actually drawn up by the optimizer in what is called the pass phase. So if the pass tree and execution plan for a SQL statement is already present in the library cache, then it can be reused. Repassing a SQL statement can also lead to what is called a new generation, lead to the generation of what is called a new execution plan. So very often we find something called Monday morning syndrome. So what happens over the weekend? We gather statistics for the entire database in the maintenance window. And sometimes we find that my query was running fine on Friday. And on Monday now, the same query is performing badly. Because possibly what can happen is that when statistics are gathered, the SQL statements or the cursors get invalidated, and when they are reloaded, there could be a possibility that the new hard pass will cause a new execution plan, which may not be as optimum as the earlier plan. Also, very important, if I keep saying that my performance has changed, we need to also examine has my data changed. Not only is the amount of data important, has the data distribution changed? Maybe uh, in the few last few months, I've done some updates to some uh, rows in my tables and some column values have changed a lot. So now what may have happened is that maybe I've introduced uh, data skewness and here's a case where my data is skewed. So with the skewed data, my performance is getting impacted. Even the histograms are not really helping. If I were to summarize at, in these three points, what is the main issue that would uh, cause SQL to go wild from the point of view of tables that have joins, has the join method changed? Have I gone now from nested to hash joins? Or has the, has the uh, order in which the tables are being joined have been changed? So when we join tables, the optimizer is presented with n number of permutations and combinations Think one of a 15 table join, it goes into millions, the number of potential combinations that the optimizer can select. So as I'm adding more and more tables to a join, think of the possibility that the optimizer may possibly select a wrong join order. Ideally, when you're joining tables, the first join set should be the most restrictive. So we pass on fewer rows to the to be handled by the next join and so on and so forth. So if the join order for tables change, and also we can expect possibly the execution plan changes and it's no longer an optimal execution plan anymore. So end of the day, statistics is good for the optimizer. So I need to basically feed the optimizer in order for the optimizer to come up with good execution plans. So the different types of stats that we gather, for example, for the table, uh, even for index. So the clustering factor is very important. I also have to gather statistics about my host server in terms of the CPU, the IO of throughput. So all the information is being used by the optimizer to come up with the execution plan. Uh, also column statistics. So I'm providing information to the optimizer how 
how many uh, distinct values are there for a, for a, for a particular table? Uh, is there a height balance histogram or is there a frequency histogram? Or is it, was it a hybrid histogram? So all this information the optimizer is going to be using to, uh, to basically come up with the execution plan. So looking at what has changed in Oracle 12, so when we upgraded from say Oracle 11 to 12 series one, there could be a case where we have encountered bad performance because a few changes were introduced in the optimizer in 12 series one, which were fixed in 12 series two, but there was a big change in 12 series one around what was called adaptive query optimization. And this adaptive query optimization was basically divided into two parts. So we had something called adaptive plans and adaptive statistics. So adaptive plans means while my query is being executed, possibly change the execution plan on the fly. So that was adaptive plan. Start off with maybe a nested loop join. And before the query has been completed, I change the initial plan to the final plan. So this is done automatically by the optimizer. Uh, and the other one is called adaptive statistics. So basically where the query has been executed, but the optimizer has basically understood that it has made some mistakes and it goes and corrects it, corrects it to the next run of the same query will be much better. So that's called things like dynamic statistics, frequent plan directives, and automatic reoptimization. So two parts to 12 series one, an adaptive query optimization, adaptive plans, and adaptive statistics. Uh, and I'll tell you in the next slide or so what has changed in 12 series two onwards. So what were adaptive plans? It enables the optimizer to defer the final plan until execution time. So first come up with initial plan, which was called the default plan. And there's something called the statistics collector that collects rows and it has internally a point called inflection point. So that point is where the optimizer decides, should I go with the nested loop or hash join? So it buffers some rows. And if the number of rows is less than what it has calculated as the inflection point, it may go for a nested loops. If it finds that actually this table has more number of rows than what the optimizer had estimated, it may change the initial nested loop join to a hash join. So while the query is being executed, change the execution plan on the fly, that is uh, adaptive plans. So for example, here I have uh, doing a join between two tables, order items and maybe products. And you have, I have a statistics collector that is basically buffering some rows. So it initially starts off with what's called a default plan, which is a nested loop plan. And if that threshold, which I talked about earlier, the inflection point is exceeded, it then changes it changes from a nested loop join to a hash join. So the final plan then is now a hash join as opposed to the initial plan, which was a nested loop, because uh, the optimizer statistics collector now is doing some additional work. It buffers some rows. And it may be thinking that this table has only 10 rows, so maybe a nested loop join would be more optimal than a hash join. So it starts getting some rows from the table. And then once it finds that, you know what, it's not 10 rows now, but a thousand rows, I'm going to change the initial execution plan of nested loops to a hash join. So we can actually see that out here. So when I do an explain plan, so this is a bit important, this is the plan the optimizer would think that it's going to run. So Look at this here, it says nested loop. And at the bottom, you can see notes, this is an adaptive plan. So now I've actually run the state statement and I'm issuing the select star from table, dbms underscore x plan dot display cursor. So I'm seeing the execution plan of the statement that has actually just been executed. So out here, we can see now, it's actually a hash join and not a nested loop join. And in the notes section, we can see that it is an adaptive plan. And if I put in the tag format at equals, equals adaptive, I can see the operations which the optimizer has basically ignored. So it started off with the nested loop join, but the optimizer statistics collector had basically put in an inflection point uh, that is, based, is an arbitrary number. And if the number of rows that the statistics collector was buffering, is more than that, that inflection point, it can change the execution plan from a nested loop to a hash join on the fly. So here you can see that it initially started off with a nested loop and then finally it was changed to a hash join. So this is uh, adaptive plans. The second part 
of adaptive Fourier optimization is something called re-optimization, where the optimizer changes the plan for subsequent execution of a SQL statement because it may have done some cardinality misestimate or it has not been uh, able to come up with the optimal plan in the first round. And then it basically will re-optimize the statement. So the next time the same statement is run, it will generate a much better plan. So the optimizer uses the information gathered from the previous execution to come up with a better alternative plan. So here we can see, uh, so the gather plan statistics in the query is actually gathering some more stats while the query is executing. Uh, don't actually put this into all your production queries. This is just for debugging. So you can see out here, it, it adds two more columns now to the explain plan. One is E rows and A rows, which is estimated rows and actual rows. So you can see out here, whereas the actual rows in the stable are 40, the estimation is 25. So the cardinality has been uh, basically estimated. Uh, most probably because I'm joining uh, two, two tables out here. And these tables that have some columns that are related, but does the optimizer know about such relationships like between uh, customer city and customer state province? It, the optimizer doesn't know that all the cities, uh, for example, Los Angeles is in the state of California, which is in the country US. So we have to tell the optimizer how to create these columns that, are, that have relationships. And what we do, we can gather something called column group statistics. So this is basically in histogram information, but treating columns as groups and not just individual entities. So what we actually can see now here in VWSQL, there is another column called is reoptimizable. So after the initial execution, where the cardinality was misestimated, you can see is reoptimizable showing yes. Because the optimizer knows, okay, I have made a mistake now, I'm going to correct it. And the next time the same query is run, you will find that that value has changed. It's going to show you that that's changed to you no. Know. So it creates another child cursor, and now it changes the is reoptimizable from yes to no. So what actually is happening in the background is something called statistics feedback. So this is a form of reoptimization where the optimizer has made a cardinality misestimate. So at the end of the execution, the, the optimizer will compare the estimated rows and actual rows. And if there is a big disparity between both, then obviously it has not uh, come up with the right execution plan. And it will use that information now. And that information now is stored in the data dictionary in what is called a SQL plan directive. Let's go back, rewind the clock and go back to maybe or it will live in 11 G days or 10 G days. If we did not have statistics on a table or statistics was stale, then we could do something called dynamic sampling. And we had different levels from two to 10. Uh, as we went higher to, higher to level, the sample was more aggressive. So it did a bigger sample to get more accurate statistics, but that could possibly lead to increased uh, past times. But the information was not stored anywhere. So I ran first query, statistics were missing. So we did a dynamic sampling and executed the query. Now, again, another query runs. And again, we go through the same process because again, that uh, the optimizer finds that statistics are stale or missing, it has to do all the same operation once again. The information about the fact that statistics are missing and then statistics are gathered is not stored anywhere. And the difference now in 12C is that there's something called SQL plan directors, which store this information now in the data dictionary. So what SQL plan directives will do in this particular example that we have here, it would have done internally uh, gathering of column group statistics because it's finding that these columns are being used in the query a lot and possibly these columns are related. So let me go and do what? Gather column group statistics as part of what's called the SQL plan directive. So a SQL plan directive now can be used for similar statements. So if I run a statement, for example, out here where I don't use Los Angeles, but maybe I select some other city, another state, but the information that the optimizer has gathered in the form of a directive can still be used for other similar statements. So the important point here is that a SQL plan directive is created to ensure that the next time the same SQL statement is ex executed or a similar state, uh, SQL statement is executed, 
basically use the information that was gathered from the previous run, now which is stored in the data dictionary to optimize any subsequent runs. So you can see out here, when the query is run the second time, the estimated rows and actual rows now are spot on. And you can see at the bottom in the notes section, uh, statistics feedback has been used for this particular statement. And now the reoptimizable has changed from yes to no. So we had something called dynamic sampling earlier. Uh, now in 12C, it's called dynamic statistics. So there's a new level called level 11 that's been added. And that level 11 can go and gather additional statistics which you optimize the needs, even if, even if there are statistics on the table. So if it finds, yes, there are statistics, but these statistics are not adequate. As in the previous example, I had to gather additional statistics on two columns or the column group. The optimizer will use this uh, uh, dynamic sampling, dynamic statistics level 11 to go and maybe create, as in this case, uh, statistics on a group of columns. So two points to keep in mind. The uh, SQL fan directives now is new Nautical 12C number and it has information that is stored in the data dictionary and it's part of what's called the uh, adaptive statistics or the reoptimization of SQL statements where the optimizer learns from previous runs uh, where it is may, may have possibly made a gardener in its estimate. So early on in um, Oracle 12C1, at least one, you only had one parameter called optimized adaptive features. Uh, the difference here was adaptive plans and uh, adaptive statistics. Adaptive plans was change plans at one time, whereas adaptive statistics was typically learned from previous executions. But the, the issue was that this was all right for maybe DSS systems or data warehouses where I don't mind spending more time for first pass because the optimizer now has to gather some more information as part of the adaptive statistics phase, but it was not very good for online transaction, uh, transaction processing applications where we required split second response times. So what was changed now in 12C Louis 2 was that uh, that single uh, parameter was made into two. So instead of, instead of optimized adaptive features, we had now optimized adaptive plans and optimized adaptive statistics. And you had the option of either enabling or disabling one of the other or both. So let's have a look at some new stuff that was introduced in Oracle 19C. And what are the new features that enables us to actually tackle the optimizer and overcome those cases where SQL has gone wild. So let's look at some of the features that came about in Oracle 19. So one of them was uh, the SQL quarantine feature. So we, we had resource manager for a long time, different versions of Oracle all the way back to eight and nine, had resource manager. And what we could do with resource manager was basically terminate any long running statements. But there was no way of us <clears throat> ensuring that the same statement would not be run again and again and again. Okay, fine, I have put a, a maximum limit, but what's gonna happen? The statement will run until it reaches the threshold that has been set by resource manager. Maybe the same statement is, is executed a thousand times. So it's executed a thousand times and a thousand times is the resource manager will stop it. So what is actually added now is a, is a functionality of a feature called SQL quarantine. Where if you have resource manager saying that this statement is running too long, what you can do then is go and quarantine that. Okay, so the, you're basically quarantine putting a quarantine on the execution plan, okay? Very important, you put a quarantine on the execution plan and not the SQL statement itself. So until the plan has changed, then how can the plan be changed? Maybe by you've added a new index or you've optimized the query. So the execution plan has changed now and the query is running much faster, then the quarantine will basically be lifted. So the difference now here is resource manager is still there, it kicks in, but now what it does, is that I can have a SQL quarantine as well. So I will use a package, I think that is an example in the next few slides. And now the costly statement runs only once before this quarantine. So what, what is being done here by Oracle internally, it, it places the SQL statement or the SQL ID now or the plan hash value on a 
blacklist list of plans that the database should not execute. So the package we use out is, is dbms underscore underscore sql queue. And there is now a new column in video the SQL called SQL quarantine where we can see uh, is this statement being prevented from running? So if we find that this value is going very high, then obviously there is a statement that is being run by my application, but because of resource manager and the quarantine, that statement uh, is not being executed. So obviously I need to go and do something about it and fix it. So I'm going to go right quickly through an example of this. So you can see out here, I've, I've basically using resource manager uh, and I've set a time limit of 20 seconds uh, for, for a query to run. Uh, and if basically the, the threshold is uh, passed, then we go and cancel the SQL session. SQL test. So here at the bottom, you can see that it ran for just close to 20 seconds. And now the statement has been aborted. So what I can do now, I can identify the SQL ID and what the best practice is to add the plan hash value as well, which is not shown here. So I can create a quarantine by SQL ID and add also the plan hash value to it. And now what's going to happen is that when I run the statement again, so it will not wait for 20 seconds. So do not wait for resource manager to come and stop it. it because it has been quarantined, it will be prevented from executing even once. So look at uh, v.sql and I can see avoided executions for that particular SQL ID and the avoided executions now are one. I can go and drop the quarantine or I can disable the quarantine. And basically what it means out here is that until I go and have a different uh, plan hash value enabled for that particular SQL ID, the quarantine is still going to get enforced. So the plan is quarantined and not the SQL statement itself. So if I went and change the SQL statement here, select star from the model my objects where owner is equal to the system system, and it is still doing the full table scan, the plan hash value is exactly the same, then even another statement that has the same plan hash value for that SQL ID, Okay, would be prevented from being run. Let's move on to the next feature, which is called real time statistics. So, what we had in data warehouse environments typically was cases where I loaded data maybe uh, in the night. So, I gather statistics maybe at 10 o'clock, and these statistics went on to maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I went and loaded data and then I truncated tables and then loaded data again. So what actually has is happening here is that the statistics that I gathered in the night that stores 10 million rows, now actually the table has been truncated and only a million rows have been added. So these statistics that I gathered in the night are basically not really accurate enough because uh, the tables have gone through maybe insert, update, deletes, or truncation, and now the actual number of rows are totally different from what was there when the statistics were gathered. So in Oracle 12C, one of the features was called uh, online statistics gathering, but that was only for two types of SQL statements. One was where you created tables with CPS, where table is select, or you uh, loaded data into the table using the insert with append head. So what has changed now, and this is important, is that in 19C, it also supports gathering of statistics for what are called conventional statements. So when I talk about conventional statements, I mean conventional DML, associated with insert, update, and delete. So what actually is being done is that on the fly, some additional statistics are being gathered. So the important thing here is that this does not replace the statistics we gather with DBMA stats. It's just augmenting the statistics. And when I load data to insert, or when I delete data, or when I update data, the statistics are also being updated at the same time. So real-time statistics uh, will only augment rather than replace your traditional statistics. So let's have a look at this here. So I'm inserting some data into this uh, table by objects and I can see. Uh, basically, I'm doubling the, the number of rows in the table. And now when I do a uh, explain plan for the insert statement, I can see out there an additional operation called optimizer statistics gathering. And the operation is load table conventional. So you can see that the optimizer is aware now that 47,974 rows have been inserted. So 
you can see uh, that the optimizer is aware that table doesn't have only uh, 47,974 rows, it actually has double the number of rows. So when I do a select star from the table, okay, so I'm assuming, assuming the statement for select distinct object type for my objects and I can see the owner's equals this. You can see now the optimizer of the explain plan shows the number of rows as 95,000, even though I've not gathered any more statistics, but the insert statement that was run also gathered some statistics uh, while the insert was happening. So at the bottom, you can see dynamic statistics used statistics for conventional DNA. So in the DBA tab statistics or user tab statistics, initially there was 47,974 rows. Now there's another column called nodes, and you can see that the number of rows has changed from 47,974 to 95,948, and it tells you why. What's in the nodes? Stats on conventional DNR. So we can um, look at this particular view and see where Oracle is gathering stats for conventional DNA statements as opposed to earlier, just for it was only for CTAS or insert with a pen plate. The next feature is something called high frequency statistics. So, what actually happens is that uh, typically we gather statistics using the uh, your automatic job that runs in your maintenance windows. Now, I mentioned that these maintenance windows are typically open only once a day. So in the night they run. So the thing you have to keep in mind is that in this maintenance window, there are a lot of other uh, advisor tasks that also run. So it's not just a statistics scatter job that runs the other jobs. And possibly there are a lot of tables with stale rows. And so all the tables basically may not be getting statistics uh, gathered regularly. So to again augment, not replace, the DBMS stats uh, complete gathering of statistics. You also have something called high frequency automatic statistics, which complements the standard automatic statistics collection job. So it helps in those cases where my tables are very volatile. And between two successive runs, which in this case could be typically one day, my statistics will go stale because the table is subject to lots of insert update delete activity throughout the day. So I gather stats last night. And if I don't have this high frequency statistics, I will only gather statistics again tonight, but what's happening in between is that my table is changing a lot and maybe the statistics are not accurate enough because of the update insert activity happening on the table. So the optimizer may possibly come up with a sub-optimal execution plan. So I can use DMS stats uh, set the global preferences and I can maybe change the time now for high frequency statistics to happen every 15 minutes, for example. So not only am I gathering stats once a day, but every 15 minutes, I'm doing what is called lightweight gathering of statistics. So it's not doing a complete gather of stats, but it's doing what's called a lightweight gathering of statistics for tables that are volatile in nature. So initially I can see now this table has stale statistics. So I've, I'm using the uh, auto task table, setting it on changing the interval to 300 seconds, which means every five minutes, but this is a high frequency task is going to run. So if I look at DBA auto stat executions, I can see when my gathering statistics job had actually completed, how long it took. So now I can see here, this is typically the job that ran in my, my normal maintenance windows. But now because I have enabled this to run every five minutes, I can see here that there is another statistics auto task in progress. And this is your high frequency gathering of statistics, which in this case is being triggered to fire every five minutes. So now if I look at stale stats column, it shows that the statistics are no longer stale because the high frequency statistics job has actually happened every five minutes. And table which is volatile in nature where the data is changing maybe every minute, uh, I'm keeping my statistics up to date for such tables. So this is for the high frequency statistics gathering. In usage report, again, another very good feature in Oracle 19C, because the problem we had earlier is that if a hint was incorrectly defined, or if there was some kind of syntax error, then it typically went undetected. Okay? And you really will be struggling to find out why is that hint not being used, and my query is fine badly, even though I have put in some hints. So here you can see that I've made a typo, so I'm using a hint called index, and uh, I've excluded the uh, 
uh, uh, character S from the uh, name of the index. So it's typo. So what's going to happen out here is even though I put the hint in, my execution plan still shows it at the full table scan. But now what I can add is something called format hint underscore report. So that can be added to any of my dbms underscore explain calls like display or display cursor, for example. And you can see at the bottom, it tells you some more information. Why is your hint being ignored? Because that index specified in the hint does not exist. Or if I make some kind of syntactical error in my hint, again, there is no way that I'll be able to find out that I made some mistake. I've basically, they brought a new application and I think I put some hints, but my performance is still bad. Nothing has changed and nothing is captured in any trace files or alert blocks to show you that some hint has been incorrectly defined. So if this is a, a wrong use of the use underscore NL hint. So if I use the same PBMS underscore expand display cursor, uh, now I can see that uh, because I'm using hint reports, it's also telling you that there's a syntax error being made and hint has been ignored because there, are, there is a syntax error. So now you know why it's not doing an SL loop, still doing a hash join or it's still doing a full table scan because there's a some, some syntax error in my hint. Automatic, uh, automatic indexes, again, Oracle latency, but I'll be showing you a slide guys at the end. Unfortunately, lots of these features, uh, I'm sorry to say, are only available on Exadata, and some of them are on cloud, uh, but very few of them are available right now for on-premise. I don't know if things are gonna change in Oracle 20, but in Oracle, I can see lots of these new features related to Optimizer are only available for cloud and Exadata platforms. Okay, so something is not in our hands. So I'll tell you a bit about the Optima automatic indexing. So the problem we have today is that how do we know which index is optimal? Uh, because the index that we have put today may not be optimal after one month because obviously the data changes, the data distribution changes. I may have changed the applications in some way. My way my number of users I have have changed. Or there could be so many reasons why indexes which are optimal maybe a few months back or today will possibly not be the same after a few months. So Changing the data volumes, changes of changing the data distribution, all this can cause my indexes to become suboptimal or even many cases obsolete. So what we have today is typically more the DB is very ad hoc. So somebody says a report is running slowly, you as a DBA go and find out, okay, I need to add the index. For this particular query, you go and add the index. And then what happens to make forget about the index, or maybe that index which you added. Is only helping one query, but it's causing other queries to request because now the optimizer is using this new index for those queries and coming up with a bad plan. So adding new indexes is not a global solution for solving a performance problem. So automatic indexing is a feature that is there in Oracle latency. It does a number of things for us. It examines your workloads and then goes and creates indexes, rebuilds indexes, also drops indexes that are not required on the fly. So what it does, initially it creates these indexes as uh, what I call invisible indexes. Then you can actually go and look at the report and it tells you, okay, these are the indexes that I've created, they're right now invisible, but here is the possible performance improvements you can get by using these, these indexes. So you can run the automatic indexing in just report mode first and then have a look at the report and then decide to go to implement. Or you can, if you trust the automatic indexing, you can actually run it directly in implementation mode where it will go and create indexes uh, automatically for you. So if I were to look at the documentation, I put that in italics at the bottom, this is what it states. It's basically an expert system that implements indexes based on what our performance in, in a skill in index during the two. So Oracle has built in a lot of uh, intelligence into this, uh, into this tool. It's looking at your workload, uh, using machine learning to look at what are the trends, what are the queries, are there indexes that are not required or are there indexes that are required? So if there's no improvement in some cases, it can also go and drop the index. Okay, so it's doing creation of indexes, rebuilding of indexes, dropping indexes all automatically for us. So here is a case where I'm enabling automatic indexing. You can do it for a particular schema, you can do it for the full 
in this case, or you can also selectively do it for certain tables. So in this case, I've configured the auto indexing in report only mode first for the demo schema. And then I can specify what, uh, what period of time I want to go and examine. And then you can generate a report using DBMS auto index report activity. So it, it goes back into for the last day example here, and it looks in at your workload and it's come up with a report saying, uh, I've come up with uh, uh, a suggestion. I have one index candidate. I've looked at uh, all the workload and this index can possibly optimize 14 SQL statements. Uh, and right now this index has been created as invisible. Uh, you can actually go and test this index out if you like and set the session parameter use in the invisible indexes to true and test the application and see really if we can, uh, if the index is going to make the change as what the automatic indexing tool is suggesting. So it tells you the index and Hi, also Gabby. tells you, yes? Sorry, five minutes. Okay, five minutes, cool. So it tells you like, this is the index that is going to be possibly created. And here are the SQL statements that will benefit from this index. You set the improvement factor for this one. It's a huge improvement. Uh, it also looks at the original explained plans and the new explained plans. So it's telling you why it's also suggesting new indexes because uh, there's a big improvement uh, in the execution plans of these particular SQL IDs. So you can see it tells you the execution plan before the index, the execution plan after the index. You can also configure a particular table space, you can assign a quota. So there's lots of stuff you can do with the tool. So here is where I'm uh, specifying a particular table space. Uh, when, when I run the uh, automatic indexing in, in implementation mode, I'm also specifying where the indexes should get created. So I can see now I've implemented the index and it has been created uh, in the table space that I actually specified. And the index you can see now is a system generated uh, index. It has the prefix sys underscore AI and a system generated name. So now the execution plan has changed from a full table scan to an index scan. So now if you run the same report, you can see now in this case, it has created the index not as invisible, but as visible. It also tells you how much of space has been used for creation of index, et cetera. Uh, we'll just very quickly for this. Uh, a new feature is also called compare plans. So very often we want to compare the execution plans before and after. Maybe I made some change and I want to compare two execution plans. Uh, so I have this particular table and here is my execution plan right now. It's doing index scan. But right now I'm not using the, the hint. So it's going for a full table scan. So now I can use DBMS explain compare plans to generate a report on what has changed. So I can also look at some queries that have been executed in the past, take them off from my AWR history and find out the execution plan for that query, compare it, compare it with today and see what has actually changed. So maybe a very useful tool. So automatic SQL plan management. So we've talked about things like SQL plan baselines where initially what used to happen is if, if a new plan was found, it was added to the baselines and accepted in what was called the evolution phase. And then that evolution was actually done by the, uh, either manually by the DBA or it ran in what was called the maintenance window as part of the auto evolve task. Now in 19C, you can actually do it more frequently. So how you get a set six more frequently. You can also do this automatic evolution of new SQL that have been added to the baseline. So you can run it maybe every one hour. So it looks at the AWR report uh, and finds out any costly SQL statements are there. And using those costly SQL statements, it goes and sees, is there a new plan based on that I can use to optimize that statement? And if it finds a new plan, it will actually implement that new plan automatically for us. I said I'll talk about the uh, features and which uh, platforms they're available on. So you can see these are some of the new features in Oracle 19C, like automatic indexing, SQL quarantine, joint time statistics, so we've gone through all of these and you can see that even on enterprise edition, which is the second column, they are not available. Uh, EE is enterprise edition uh, engineered systems. Uh, you see that for engineered systems, it is available and it's also available for exit data cloud services. So unfortunately, even if I do have enterprise edition license, 
At this stage, I can't use any of these uh, new features. If you want to actually test out these new features, you can actually use the underscore hint. I can, I can actually send you that hint you can use. That can fool the system into thinking that it's Xdata, and you can actually go and try out these uh, new latency performance rate features. So with that, guys, I think I've just wasted my time. Thanks very much for attending. My email address is there at the bottom. If you want to ask any questions or do have any feedback, please feel free to drop me a line. And all the very best. Keep yourself safe and continue to support the EPIC AUC. There are lots of other interesting sessions on performance training, which I encourage you to attend. Thanks for that and have a good day. Thank you so much, Gavin. Yes, we have no questions to Q&A. That means everyone can watch the replay uh, for the next couple of weeks and can also interact with Gavin by his email in the in the screen at the moment or also placing questions directly on the replay uh, uh, page of his session. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks so much, Gavin. Thank you, Francisco.